Hello and welcome to another episode of the Dad Strength Podcast. I am your host, Richie Leahy. Lately, we've been uh, trying to get some photos of our daughter, and I don't know how much this is talked about, but whenever your child is around age one or so, it's very hard to get them to pay attention long enough and stay still long enough to get good photographs. Uh, We went, whenever she was born, to an actual Photoshop to get photography done. They had all the props for us. It was Christmas. At that point, she was only a couple months old. But even then, due to her like erratic movements, some of the pictures didn't turn out to be that sharp, and I was very disappointed. So based on that experience, we went ahead... And we got our own digital camera, a a good, nice one. And uh, if you listen to my other podcasts, especially Numb, I have some episodes where I talk about what we got and why. I'm not going to go into the details here, but I found that that is a rewarding investment over the year that she's been born. And I've become a better photographer because of it. Uh, Just to put, and even to spend a good bit of money, we got a fast prime lens which that means it's one that doesn't zoom just to do portraits of her. And I got it with about the same focal length that you would use and see with the human eye, which is the equivalent of like a 50 millimeters, I believe. So I went ahead, got that lens, and now whenever I get photos of her, they are very sharp and I can get them for any occasion. So lately we had, it's much later, uh, whenever this comes out, I think this is... Yeah, the day before, the last day of March, actually. Uh, so this podcast is recorded to be released on the last day of March. And we are only now getting pictures in her Christmas dress. And I, whenever, I hate to buy a dress or an outfit that kids can only wear one time, even if it's for a big event. To me, that just seems like a waste. So we got her a Christmas dress. We got it a little bit bigger, knowing that it was going to be cold hoping that she could wear it in the spring. And with that, I wanted to get some good photographs of her, but I wanted her to look good in it. I didn't want it to be a dress where it kind of just looks super big on her or uncomfortable. And we waited, we waited. I was going to do it a couple weeks ago, but being the monkey that she is, she climbs, hit her face, and then uh, she had a scratch for a while. And then I was outside grilling up some steaks for dinner and I told her that she could come out with me and she usually does a very good job of just walking right down it's like a one little step to get out of our house onto our back patio and she thought the screen door was there and I could see her uh, reach to try to turn the screen door because normally she can like just push it open and it takes pretty much her whole body because she's only one and a half and so whenever she did it she turned And she fell right on the pavement. And as she was turning, as she fell, I couldn't catch her. I said, there's no screen there. And she just looked at me confused and still tried to open it and fell. And so she got a pretty good scrape uh, because she kind of rolled with it. So she didn't actually like make a hard thud. She was kind of just like more shocked than hurt. But just because it was pavement and her face kind of rolled on it. Then there was another big scrape. So we had two wounds going on. And so finally, she's all cleared up, hasn't had any mishaps for a while. And we went outside and she just runs around nonstop. So it's very, very tough. And I don't know how other parents do it. We do a lot of recordings and stuff on our phones. And we have a photo album set up privately to share with families through an online cloud service that I set up. And I find that that works well because with family members spread out across the United States and even the world, It's very hard to have people keep up with how she's growing. And so a good way to do that was building up a photo album. And I'll probably talk about this in depth a little bit more in a later episode. But I do know that as we tried to get some photos for her in her dress, she is nonstop moving. And I like to have like the sharpest photos. So I I think it's very hard for parents And if you're thinking of getting a good digital camera, and you don't have to get a professional one like I did, uh, you can get good results with any pretty much expensive digital camera. I would be weary of ones that were in like the three to $500 range 
just because at that price point, your cell phone's probably gonna be just as good. And I know some people that have used the attachment of their cell phones for professional work, where you can add an external like lens type, just like you would do in an extra camera. I haven't tested it myself, so unfortunately I can't give feedback on that. But I do know that getting a good, good camera is perfect for uh, having a young child because now we don't have any of the moments that we would have had just captured on your phone from your camera. Anytime she's doing something cute, family photos, she's together hanging out with her cousins, I'm able to get very sharp photos. I got a, a, lens, or a flash for it so that when we're inside doing things, it works out great with noise. And yeah, getting a digital camera, uh, you can get a full DSLR style camera or you can get some of the other crop sensor ones. I recently upgraded, and got, or not upgraded, kind of like a, a step down, I guess, it, on sensor size if people are into that. But I got a 4K Panasonic Micro Four Thirds camera in addition to my main camera that I did get a zoom lens with. And with that one, I'm able to do complete, hold the shutter down and just take rapid fire photos of her running. And it's good for like outdoor, it even picks up great for sports photography. I've had it at, I've had it at a softball game, college softball game at NC State. It worked really well. I was able to get, just because of the sunlight, it was able to get clear photos that were sharp, even with the movement of swinging a bat, hitting a ball. And so if I'm able to get that speed, I can easily track the movements of a child moving into a toddler age. So I'm able to get great photos of her as she's running. And my only problem is some of them, she's not like looking at the camera, but they are very candid. And so if you're a parent and you're wondering like, hey, how can I capture these moments? You don't want anything big and that's going to be invasive that would interfere with your daily routine. I have a camera that's small enough. Like I said, I have the one lens on it. I always keep it in my bag. I do have a flash that I keep in there with like an extra battery for my cell phone. Just if we're out and about going to some parks and the phone starts to die or whatever. I am able to snap some photos if anything cute happens. I have some photos of some of her friends that come over. They give each other a hug. I'm able to grab that photo real quick. Sometimes it's always going to be faster just to use your phone, especially if you have it out already. But I do recommend just due to the image quality that they're going to be great. And um, I'm going to be putting some photos up in the near future on Leahy Media as I finish the site. I've never actually really finished that site because the podcasting stuff just kind of took off on its own. And so if you want to see the photos, some of the quality and stuff that I do, it will be there. I'm also on Flickr and Instagram, Richie Leahy, if you want to search those out and follow me, add me as a friend, whatever they have the thing set up to be. And you can see a lot of my photos. And then you can see like, I have some, I've, I've shot some in the fall for like my sister's wedding. I just did some extra shots for her and some things. But for a kid, it's great to have extra fo- photos of the family at any moment. So it's good investment. It's kind of what's been going on, trying to get some photos of her, taking her to different places. I I bet we're going to be keep doing that in the next couple of weeks. So there's that. And for this week, a uh, new item on our list is going to be uh, baby nighttime soothers. Okay, so our daughter, I've talked about it before. She slept through the night. Unbelievable. Pretty much her whole life. It has been great for parents. We have no tired, like you're not up all night going crazy or anything like that. It has been perfect for us. And it's worked out so well that we have no issues or anything with her. Now, lately, with the daylight savings time I've brought it up before, it's hard to get her to adjust. And so she goes to bed later and later. And so I found out that what I've been doing some new routines where I tell her, like, okay, it's bedtime. We go through, we tell everything good night in her room, give everything kisses, her stuffed animals. I tuck her in now, even though it's getting close to summer and it's getting warmer. I have, uh, she loves Care Bears, so we found a Care Bear t- a blanket. It was a Care Bear blanket uh, that we had laying around, and she immediately fell in love with it. I didn't even know that we had it packed away somewhere. Uh, but what I do is I 
put her down in bed and say, all right, I'm going to tuck you in with the carrier blanket, tell them good night. And then I tuck her in. And what we started to do was if people are outside in the neighborhood, you know, it's summer, they start to get the extra noise. This is where we started to roll out the nighttime soother. So we had one that's an owl and the owl has a light on top. It, it's a beam and it projects uh, stars and shapes onto the roof. So it works out very well for her because uh, she can see those. And it also makes a variety of different noises. It has animal like cricket chirping. It has one that's like sea or waves. And then it has a bunch of other ones. So that's what we've been using. And it's worked out pretty well. Uh, because like I said, when summertime hits, then the neighborhood starts to get awake. And as a parent, you try to do your best, but really you can't interfere with other people's lives to like have them be quiet just because your child's going to bed. So if they're outside and they're having a cookout or whatever, no big deal. So we started to get ahead of the curve by putting out a little nighttime soother and then it works well. And then the same thing, if I need to go outside, maybe I have a phone call come in. I'm going to pop outside and talk outside might be right outside her window. I really don't have to worry. And she's able to get right back to sleep. Now the time frame, because of that hour skip, it hasn't really shifted back to her normal time yet. Uh, but it's getting better and better. And she has been skipping a nap or two. We talked to the doctor because we had her annual appointment. I guess it wasn't annual yet. But we had her appointment. He said that that, that would be fine. That we just have to kind of keep an eye out for her. And make sure that she is getting enough rest. And so like maybe that would be letting her sleep in. And some things we could try was waking her up early to see if she would nap early. And we did find out, I think I mentioned this before, I might not have. But if we put her to bed early around noon, which doesn't even go like line up with the daylight savings time, then she does take a long nap. And so we just have to make sure that we don't miss that nap window. And that means, yeah, lunch is kind of messed up on the weekends. We can't really go go and grab a bite to eat like we used to and put her down at like one or two. Now we just have to put her down early. So it really messes up the mornings, but I'll tell you, the afternoons and evenings are great because then we get more time with the family, hanging out, walking around with her, doing different things, and it just works out really well. So I would recommend getting one, a nighttime soother. Again, if you don't know what it is, it's just a noise machine, basically. You can get one for adults. You can also get one for um, kids. And that's what ours is. Like I said, it's like a nightlight and it's on there. We'll be going ahead and taking anything in the room just to make it more of a consistent nighttime approach. So, all right, that's it for this week. Trying to get extra things on our list. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. The Dad's Drink list will be continued. I think we've talked about this before. And that's how the podcast will be going. So again, the item on this week's list is Nighttime Soothers. And the list is up. I don't even know if it's 100% updated, but we'll still be doing changes to the site. It's going to take a while for that to totally take hold. But uh, be patient with the process. Again, follow me on Twitter. My name is Richie Leahy, and thank you for listening.